and we were very engaged parents, very engaged. Okay, Winston was on a school site council, he was on a parent council, he mm -hmm. was even during my years working with the city where it was kind of a little bit tricky mm -hmm. to be advocating hard on the school when I'm also a, uh, working at the city of Boston as right. a, a department a director. But he got involved, really. Got to work alongside supporting the principal, supporting the assistant principal in the school, you know. So I, I'd love to see more parental in, engagement. We know that that's going to be hard because we have so, there's so many issues, issues around the quality of the schools, issues around inequality, right. um, okay, the uneven quality across the system. How do, I, you, how do, you, how do you address that? Well, um, um, there are a couple, there's, okay, for, okay got, I got ideas now. Oh, there we go. And I'm going to just say to your viewers yes. who are listening, because I know that some people have weighed in to say, Charlotte, I don't know if you really get the school thing. So I've gotten some feedback on that, um, for, particularly from some of our um, longtime um, African-American teachers and administrators okay. who are concerned with the school assignment plan that was proposed earlier this year and feel that the school assignment plan limits further the number of quality school choices for kids of color. So I have gotten definitely an earful on that, mm -hmm. and I am listening. Um, okay, but that said, we all have an opportunity to rally around the schools, whether you're in High Park or East Boston, whether you're in West Roxbury, whether you're in Mattapan, we all have to see that these children these students belong to all of us, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know, and I know mm -hmm. we pride ourselves as Americans on the competitiveness and, right. you know, and that kind of thing, but these are our children, this is our city. This city is not that big in terms of area and number of schools. We're under 50 square miles, got, I think it's 127 schools or something like that. We are able, we can, we can deal with this. So we get to bring in a new leader mm -hmm. for the school system in the, in the form of a new school superintendent. Do you think that's the key? I think that is one very, very important key. Mm -hmm. We know, you and I, that all that happens in an organization does not solely rest with the leader, right. but the leader has a lot to do exactly. with that culture exactly. in terms of setting the tone, setting the tenor, setting direction, recruiting people into the school, making, establishing a, an esprit de corps, making people feel like we can really make something happen here. Do, are you in favor of longer school days, uh, shorter summer vacations? Are you have kids. I, I, I'm in favor of it. I know so, you are. Yeah, exactly. Okay, well, I mean, right. okay, any parent, I was going to say, you, you got the answer to that one. I mean, all, some of this stuff is just practical stuff, too. Right, right. But I do understand, and I haven't gotten to, I, I haven't um, been before, like, this, the um, BTU or mm. anything for endorsement. Good I, luck with I, that. I, no, yeah. I'm, I'm Not looking the endorsement. forward to it. Not the endorsement, but just talking to. I want to, no, I definitely, I, I, I respect teachers. My mother was a teacher, my right. godmother was a teacher, I had right. another godmother was a teacher, one godmother was a superintendent of schools. I mean, education is important. My That's father right. taught, um, Winston was a substitute teacher, um, I taught in the Peace Corps. Mm -hmm. um, you know, so we believe in education. I have two master's degrees. I mean, mm -hmm. I know that I have not made it as far as I have, or I would not have, right. if, it, you know, if I didn't have education. Right. So that's really important. They're important to us, right? So with longer school days, Parents certainly want longer school days for their kids. Mm -hmm. One is that we know that we're in this sort of global competitive world. Okay. We want our kids to be able to, for example, speak more than one language. We want our students to be able to do something like, you know, sort of play an instrument mm -hmm. or learn know to, how to talk about art and, mm -hmm. and art and music and culture. We want our students to have the extra time for tutoring and keep them away from the TV set and mm -hmm. the computers. We want them to have good social skills. Mm -hmm. I mean, the list goes on, right? And you're an athlete, and I like tennis, too. I mean, I'm, I'm not playing with the campaign so yeah. much, but, <laughs> you know, we want them to be able exactly. to maybe do a little dancing, right. music, um, tennis, uh, basketball, you know, things like that. So, we, I just so got But I will just say, though, that I do understand in terms of where teachers may be that they probably say that they support longer school days too, right. but then there's the issue is that do we demand the longer school days without the compensation? Right, right, and that's the tricky part that the mayor has to deal with. Um, listen, we've only, I've got the five minute mark that we have to wrap up soon, so I wanna hit a couple of issues if you can just give me a brief uh, kind of sense on that, and I know all these issues take more than that, but right. I just want folks to get a sense of where you stand on Let's start with jobs and, and employment. Okay. What, what's your thoughts? How would you bring more work, more jobs to the city? So I, I should say that I guess I will say I'm somewhat fortunate, um, should I be elected, um, that we are emerging, have emerged from this great recession. If it were on the front end of that, 
it would be very frightening, very right. scary, right? To be talking about jobs and economic development as we are entering a recession. But to exit this recession and to see that there is um, potential, there's gro job growth and um, potential for um, you know, jobs coming online, thousands of jobs coming online here in Boston, um, created, you know, whether we're talking about the um, housing units and the construction pipeline or attracting businesses in the innovation district or whatever. I mean, it's, it's, there's opportunity. So you feel positive I about feel the fact really, that... I feel really, really positive about... Because, and also remember, Boston is an, just a marvelous city in yeah. so many ways. You know that, and yeah, I know that, absolutely. and others know it. We, th we are, we, this is a gem, and I'm so happy to... Th this is my home. But I will say the challenge is that while unemployment may be low or below the national um, right. number right. here in the city, in the downtown and neighborhoods, we know that there are certain sections of the city where it is double That's right. the rate that we see in other places. That is a problem. And that's something that you would take head on? Without a doubt. I also know that when you go around, I'm door knocking business districts, I see the vacant storefronts. Mm -hmm. And we should have retail there. Right. Again, it's, it's a vicious cycle. How can I get retail in if I've got bullets flying? Right. How right. can I, you know, so, I, so it's all interconnected, isn't it, Steve? Right. Right. Yeah, but I would say we're going to bring in a dynamic chief economic development officer, person who will run the BRA, but the BRA is going to change. It's going to be one that is much more transparent, one much more open and predictable, one that allows for community input that's respectful of the community when it goes out to do development. And then this, this, this BRA, which I know has a lot of talent there, because I work with these mm -hmm. folks at the BRA, very smart, talented people, right? To be able to have the, that talent used to market the city in ways that we really haven't seen. So it's marketing the downtown, it's also marketing our neighborhoods. It's doing the planning, so we want to have a BRA director, a strong urban planner, who is going to be able to look at the entire city and see where the opportunities are. I, I'm very excited about the prospect of taking this um, sort of economic development piece to a new level, you know? And, and that's why I'm running. Okay, so um, we're gonna have to have, to have you back as we get closer to the election because we're just about out of time. We've got okay. about 60 seconds left. I'd like you to look into the camera and talk to the audience now and tell them why they should give Charlotte Golar Ritchie their vote for Mayor Boston. Okay, to your viewing audience, I just want to say that I love this city. I've lived in this city for many, many years, raised my family here. I'm a wife, a mother, a homeowner. Um, I have worked in various jobs that have given me the chance to give back to the city, and now I want to build on that experience, whether it is working as a state rep, I was an elected official here in the city, whether it's working as somebody who was the head of a city agency, who managed a, a budget, who managed um, staff in a, a union environment where I felt I was very, I worked very cooperatively with labor and was respectful of the folks, of my employees at the Department of Neighborhood Development, and we made wonderful things happen in almost in every neighborhood here in the city. Um, I would love to be able to draw on the experience that I had working with Governor Patrick and working at Youth Build USA, where I was a senior vice president, advocating strenuously for our young people who dropped out of high school to reconnect them with jobs and education. I am going to bring our young people together. We didn't get a chance to talk about our youth, but our youth are our future. And I'm excited by the notion that we could have an administration where young people are going to be engaged and going to help drive the agenda for the Charlotte Golai Ritchie administration. That's why I'm going to convene a roundtable, a conversation with young people here in the city on July 27th to begin the dialogue, to begin looking at what that direction, what direction we should go into to chart a course for the city. And I hope that you all who are watching me today will consider me and vote for me for the next mayor of Boston. Thank you. Beautiful. Charlotte, thanks so much for coming on. We look forward to hearing much more from your candidacy or from your campaign about your candidacy. Folks, uh, we're going to go to a break, and on the other side, uh, John Barrows is going to be here, and we're going to talk about what he will bring to the city of Boston if, in fact, he becomes uh, the next mayor of this great city. Please do stay tuned.